All right, so thank you to everybody for signing up for this academic showcase, Arts and Sciences, um, and logging in tonight. We're super excited. We've got some really good folks here. Um, so just to give a quick intro, we have Dr. Robin Schiffman. She is the Dean of Humanities, Fine Arts, and Social Sciences. We've got Dean Ron Grolo, who is uh, oversees natural sciences and business. We've got Jim Moskalewicz, one of our esteemed counselors, and I am Quentin Overacker, and I am Director of Admissions, Records, and Transfer Services. So what tonight's going to look like is we're going to do intros in a moment, and I'm really excited for those introductions. I'll talk about them in a moment. Then we're going to hear from the deans about their kind of what, what academic programs do they oversee and how can those apply to you. And then Azaret, Loveland, and myself took a look at some of the common transfer programs that we have. And so we're going to ask questions as, as a student who may be interested in one of those programs. Then we're going to hear from Jim on how in the heck does a student and how do we keep everything straight because we have so many options. And then I've got questions on there. But what I really want folks to know is type any questions you have as we're going along. We want this to be as interactive as possible. And so um, I just put something in, oh, I tried. Um, I just put in the chat box, type any questions here. So it is really difficult on these large meetings, you all probably know that, um, to, to kind of try to talk and, and ask questions. So we would prefer, oh, and Jim, Jim hit me up too, type any questions that you have in the chat as we're going along. Don't wait till the end. We want, again, we want this to be pretty interactive. Um, Finally, if you could mute, um, that would be super helpful because I know I've done that before where I've been on a meeting and I forgot to hit mute and then I um, carry on a conversation or something like that. Um, so real quick, what the heck does arts and sciences mean? We're gonna get into that. That's what the whole night is about. But what we wanted to convey is these are gonna be the transfer programs. So the academic showcases up to this point have been focused on career and technical education programs. They're gonna be those hands-on short-term certificate programs where you get in, you get out and you make some good money um, and, and you're not taking a bunch of gen eds. Well, a huge, half of our students look at this arts and sciences um, sort of field and, and that's what they go on for. So basically we're gonna talk about all the transfer programs that we have. So if a student comes here, takes their general education courses, takes some courses that they focus on a particular major, and then they transfer on to a state school or an out-of-state school or something like that. That's what we're looking at is these four-year degrees. So we tried to encompass as much as we possibly could with the arts and sciences. And so that's what we're gonna focus on tonight. Now, I, I'm actually gonna stop sharing and I want to do some intros. And so I'm gonna have everybody on here introduce themselves. And one thing to keep in mind is when we talk about arts and sciences, when we talk about transfer, you know, pathways, there's a million different pathways for how we got where we are. And so I thought it would be kind of interesting. So I'm actually going to stop sharing. And Robin, if you don't mind, I'm going to turn it over to you for an intro to who you are. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm delighted that you're able to, to join us tonight. And no question is off limits. So even if I define arts and sciences brilliantly, and two minutes later, you still have lingering questions, please, um, please jump in because I'm, I'm surrounded with some excellent colleagues who can help out if I falter or if I'm not clear. So no question is off limits. And, um, you know, we, we tend to speak as if we understand that audiences know everything that we're talking about. And so we want to make sure that we're being clear and, we're, and that you're following along with us. But um, Quentin wanted a scintillating introduction. I'm not sure any of us are going to be able to deliver, um, but I will say that I'm currently Dean of Humanities, Fine Arts, and Social Sciences at IBCC. I've been in this role now. This is my seventh year, and I came from the English classroom. So I was a literature professor for a very long time before I decided that I wanted to be in charge of things. Um, and I still remember teaching and loving teaching very fondly. Um, I don't interact with students very much unless you want to talk about how wonderful your instructor is, um, or unless you want to complain about your instructor or you need something waived. Generally, I, I, I have very little to do with students, which is which is quite a shame. Um, but um, I, I had a very kind of a traditional path. Um, 
excuse the, the, dark, the, the barking dog. Um, I had a pretty traditional path where I went to graduate school knowing that I wanted to stand in front of people on the other side of the desk and communicate to them my passion, which was teaching about books and the acquisition of knowledge. And I knew that I wanted to be in a higher education setting. Um, so I went to graduate school and then was fortunate enough to be hired and promoted and able to do exactly what I loved. Um, I know that that's not everybody's story and that's not everybody's journey. And it doesn't have to be by any means that does not have to be your story. Um, and you don't have to know what you wanna do when you're 16 or even 26. Um, it just happens to have been my story. Um, and I've made a successful career out of that. Um, so I will stop there and you'll hear a lot more from me a little bit later. Thank you, Robin. So Ron Grolo, Dean of Natural Sciences and Business, let's hear, let's hear about you. Good evening, everyone. My name is easy to remember because little kids grow high. My name is Grow Low. And in the chat, I put my email address. So if you have any questions or there's anything that I can do for you after this session is over, please do not hesitate to email me. And I want to emphasize that what I will do tonight is I can put you in touch with specific instructors and program coordinators who oversee certain specific areas that you may be interested in. I actually graduated a long time ago, 1978, from LaSalle Peru High School. And uh, then I went two years to IVCC, obtained my associate's degree, and then transferred to the University of Illinois at Champaign. Urbana, and I have both my bachelor's and master's degrees from the U of I. I actually had no intention of going into administration in my career. I wanted to be a teacher, and uh, I actually taught at IVCC for four years part-time, five years full-time, and then uh, the uh, previous dean of the department retired and I was approached and asked if I would be interested in administration. And I said, no, <laughs> because I wanted to teach. And they said, Ron, you don't understand. Uh, at that time, uh, about half the job was teaching and half the job was administration. So I did go into the position. Uh, and even though now the administrative positions, including the deans, are all administrative in their function, I'm kind of grandfathered in and I have continued to teach. So I teach anatomy and physiology. I've been doing that for 35, 36 years now at the college. And I've been an academic dean for 26 years uh, in natural sciences and business. So that's my story. Very cool. Thank you, Ron. So Jim, you have a long winding path. Let's, let's hear how you started in the Illinois Valley, moved and, and came back and how you're a counselor now. So I shared that story with you somewhere along the way, I take it, huh, Quentin? <laughs> you certainly did. Yes, I'm, I also graduated from local high school. I graduated from St. Pete Academy in 1982. I went to a big university straight out of St. Pete as an engineering major. I went to University of Iowa for a year and a half as an engineering major, and that just was not for me. I didn't realize it until I was a year and a half into the program. And I'm, <clears throat> as a counselor here at IVCC, I'm, I'm meeting with students all the time that are questioning their paths. Where are they going? What do they want to do? And I just want to let everybody know it's okay to change paths. It's very difficult to know exactly what you want to do from an early age and just stay on that path until you, until you get to where you want to be. So, and, and yes, my path <clears throat> ended up changing. I took a little time off. I ended up uh, graduating from Northern Arizona University with a bachelor's degree in psychology. And how I got a bachelor's degree in psychology, I don't even need to, I, I don't think I should go into all the details about that. <laughs> yeah, but um, I did, <clears throat> I was kind of, majoring in psychology and minoring in business. And then I'd major in business and minor in psychology. And then all of a sudden I realized that, hey, if I took like 15 hours of psychology, I can graduate. So I did not take a traditional path. I did not take a straight line to my career um, or to obtaining a college degree, first of all, let alone my career. 
Um, I worked <clears throat> with a degree in psychology. I worked for a couple of years in the mental health field. And, um, and I continued to evaluate where I wanted to go with myself and my career. And I returned to school, graduate school, and got a master's degree in education because I wanted to apply counseling skills in the higher education setting that I do now. So I eventually got to where I am. And this, is, this would kind of fall under the category of a dream job for me. I had an epiphany at one point in time that maybe I could help somebody that struggled, that was challenged to find a direction and so on, because I went through that myself. And I had that epiphany and I targeted my graduate school education towards my career. And uh, it worked out well for me. My master's degree is from Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. And I'm very happy to be at IBCC. I've been here for 24 years. So come talk to me anytime you want. Thanks, Jim. That was perfect. And <clears throat> I'm not going to go into too much of my backstory, but I graduated locally as well. Um, had no idea what I wanted to do. Ended up coming here studying geology, of all things. Um, transferred on to Western Illinois, and then got my master's degree in geology at University of Tennessee, and then ended up working um, in a mine in Montana, an underground mine. And it, it's the reason I say that is I checked every box I was supposed to check once I picked a geology degree. Once I picked my degree, I checked every box and I got to the, the you know, I got to my career. I got to what I should have been doing, which is, you know, I should have loved it. And I hated every single second of it. And so here I am now, director of admissions, records and transfer services. That makes absolutely no sense. And I get that with a geology degree. But the reason I wanted everybody to tell their story is I think, you know, now you can see there's no one way to, to pursue your education. And thanks so much to Jim for a moment ago talking about when you're 18 or 19 or 20 or 21 for that, it doesn't matter. You're expected to know exactly what you want to do. And there's so much outside pressure and that stinks. But there's also a lot of internal pressure. I know that a lot of you are putting on yourself. So first things first, like Jim said, don't stress out about picking a major right now and knowing what you're going to do. But secondly, if you do pick a major and you get you know, through it and you realize this isn't what I want to do, want to do with my life, that's okay too. You can change your mind after. I think too often we hear, okay, if I major in psychology and that's what I get my four-year degree in, I'm going to be a psychologist the rest of my life. That is simply not the case. This four-year degree that you're pursuing opens up a boatload of doors and gives you a lot of freedom to choose what you want. So don't get discouraged along the pathway. So thanks to everybody for sharing that. And um, I would just add one other thing, if I may. Yeah, please do. Uh, for anyone who is a first generation college student, in other words, you are gonna be the first one in your family to go to college, realize that uh, when I first went away to college, that's exactly where I was as well. My father was a high school dropout. He came back and got his GED from IVCC and then uh, was a carpenter for all of his life. My mother, in her own words, barely graduated high school. I have two uh, brothers, neither one of them have gone to college. And so I still, to this day, am the only one in my family who went to college. And looking back on those days, there were a lot of unknowns for me. How is this gonna work? What kind of classes am I gonna take? And one of the beautiful things about IVCC is that there are all kinds of people here, some of whom you're looking at right now, who are willing and ready to help you make those decisions. So. If you are a first generation college student, know that you can do it and you can get a lot of help along the way. Absolutely true. Thanks, Ron. That was that's a that's a great message that we want out there. There's help here and, and that's what we're here for. So now let's get into what, what everybody signed up for. So, Robin, I'm going to start with you. You your division that you oversee is humanities, fine arts and social sciences. That encompasses an awful lot of things. And this kind of speaks to what we talked about it at the beginning. If you want to transfer, you've got a ton of options. So if you can share a little bit, what exactly is humanities, fine arts, and social sciences? So there's, there's several ways of answering this, but on a very simple level, 
the courses that you take in English, in philosophy, in psychology, in, in sociology, in music, in art, all of these classes have a title to them that places them in an organizing body of knowledge. And that's what we call the humanities, or we call the fine arts or the social sciences. Um, these distinctions are important insofar as, as, as Quentin said earlier, you have to check off boxes, right? And the counselors are important because they're the ones who help you even show you the boxes in the first place um, and help you check them off. Um, so every course has a prefix, which is probably three letters long, and that corresponds to an area of study. So that's a, a sort of very practical answer. Um, but the, the longer answer, you know, kind of like the long view, is that the study of humanities, fine arts, and social sciences is at higher at the at the level of higher education is what helps to make you understand your role in a democratic society. Now that doesn't mean that that turns you into Democrats, okay? If you hear nothing else tonight, please hear, I'm not saying that you get turned into Democrats. It's supposed to make you understand, thank you, someone here has a, has a sense of humor. It's to make you understand your role in a democratic society because we live in a democratic society. So that means you understand how to think, how to process knowledge, how to ask questions, how to challenge assumptions, how to marshal evidence, how to gather evidence, and think through your role as a civically oriented person, whether it's on a very local level in the Illinois Valley, or whether you can extrapolate that to something more broad that encompasses something beyond the borders of the United States. States, right? So, so this is the area, if you're interested in studying things um, about comparative politics or government or different religions of the world, um, different literatures of the world, you know, different ways of understanding how humans came to be and interact with one another, right? That's the study of anthropology. Um, so it's really ab about how we engage with each other, how we leave our, our mark on the world and how we interpret what we've left on the world. And so you'll find, you know, again, the psychology, the sociology, the anthropology, you'll find music, you'll find painting, ceramics, um, education, you'll find all of these, we call them disciplines, they're areas of study. You'll find all of that toward the making of you as a critical thinker, one who can accumulate knowledge, discern knowledge, determine what is truth and what is factual and what is not. And if you've paid any attention to current critical discourse, especially lately, you'll know that that is a really pressing issue, right? Determining fact from, from fiction. Um, so we do all that work and we do it effortlessly and we do it with experts in the field who have gone to graduate school and who have studied this and who understand these questions and can help you not necessarily find the answers because these are, these are big questions, but they help you ask and they, they help you ask better questions and they help you reframe the questions so that you become a little more comfortable in your particular area and interest of study. Quentin, you're on mute. Um, thank you, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Robin, that, that was helpful. And I, I, I really like that definition. So. With that, Ron, let's talk about, now I didn't, you'll see, I didn't include business on here. And the reason I didn't include that is we had an academic showcase with accounting, business, and marketing. And you can go back, those are all underneath Ron's division. You can go back and watch that academic showcases if you'd like. So with that, Ron, what the heck are natural sciences? What does that mean? So simply defined uh, the study of natural sciences deals with the branch of science that involves the study of the physical world in which we live. And within the natural sciences, you have two basic divisions. You would have the physical sciences, which uh, in general would be the study of non-living things, disciplines like geology, which Quentin, you went into, the study of rocks and, and related topics, and then the study of living things, uh, courses like biology, for example. So within the natural sciences, there are a variety of disciplines that are offered 
uh, including chemistry, uh, both general chemistry all the way through organic chemistry. We have geology, we have geography. Uh, in the uh, life sciences, we have biology, microbiology, human anatomy, and physiology. And uh, I'm sure that there are a few other courses that I, disciplines that I've missed. Physics comes to mind, for, for example. So that's what the natural sciences uh, encompasses. Now, within the division, there are a few other disciplines as well. As Quentin mentioned, uh, business is in my division. Uh, we, you know, we do offer a transfer program in business. So if that's something that you're interested in, send me an email, let me know, and I'll hook you up with the uh, program coordinator who oversees our business program. We offer transfer programs in accounting as well, in marketing and management. Uh, health and wellness and physical education is within this division. And I also have criminal justice. We offer a transfer program in criminal justice, which is a very popular program. One of the up and coming programs in the division is agriculture. And our agriculture program has grown tremendously over the last four years in its existence. As an example, when we first started, we had about $4,000 available in scholarship money. And now we have over $50,000 available on an annual basis in agriculture scholarships alone. So um, those are you know, many of the natural sciences that we offer at Illinois Valley. Perfect. Thanks, Ron. And so as, as you all just heard, Ron and Robin themselves oversee a ton of different disciplines. So what we're going to do from here on out is we took a look at what do, our, what do our students tell us they want to major in? What do our students transfer um, to a university for? So just by its very nature, we're going to miss a lot of topics. And, and obviously, I apologize for that. But it's simply because we can't cover everything. So please type in the chat box any questions you have. Like I said, we're going to hit some, some programs that we hear a lot about. But if, you, if you're thinking of something that you don't see yet or you're just kind of curious about, please type your questions in the chat box. So with that, Robin, I'm going to start with you. Um, this is where we're going to talk about what can I do at IBCC, what kind of classes would I take, that sort of thing. So Robin, you're an English major. So we often hear, you know, we, we, we often hear that English majors, well, you're going to teach English, but I'd like to hear from you. What do your fellow English majors do? What can you do with an English major? Well, first of all, we, we do have uh, the more traditional writing sequence that all students who get an AA or an AS degree and, and even, the AA, even the associate's degrees um, in the transfer in the CTE world, um, the career and technical world that they need to take. But a lot of people don't realize that you can also study creative writing at IVCC, and we also have journalism. Um, and we have a business and a technical writing class as well. So even the English major, a lot of people think, oh, it's just, you know, literature. I'm just going to read Shakespeare, for example, or rehash what I did in high school. We have a variety of options where you can work for our school newspaper or literary magazine, that kind of a thing. Um, the other thing that I like to tell prospective students is that law schools love English majors. And, you know, I, I, I could, you know, we could make this interactive and I could ask you why you think that's true. Well, the answer has to do with the fact that an English major typically has a really keen sense of how to pay close attention to words and how they're organized on the page, how to make a claim, how to support it with evidence, and what do you think both trial lawyers and non-trial lawyers have to do? They do a ton of writing. They do a lot of things where they have to support what they say. Um, and so, you know, I like to say that you can do absolutely anything you want to do with an English major, including, um, you know, including something that maybe you didn't think you could do, which is end up studying law. Um, English majors are, 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 are people who have studied, like I said, um, words on a very, very detailed and systematic level. And English majors don't necessarily have much difference than let's say, you know, a psychology major or a music major, um, but they have a facility with understanding how language works and 
how the research process works and how we understand what to do with words and how powerful and how important they are. And given the kind of digital landscape that we're in, we recognize that even you know, elementary school students are producing, uh, well, they're consumers of this digital landscape. But you think about Twitter and you think about social media and how often people are producing words for an audience. And if people actually studied grammar, I mean, think about how much cleaner a lot of these productions uh, you know, might be. So an English major can be a blogger, um, can be a YouTuber. Um, I mean, there's a lot of connections and relations to what people are currently consuming these days, uh, even, even in social media. So notice that I haven't said you could be a teacher or an editor, um, because of course that's the standard thinking, oh, this is what I can do with, with, a, with an English degree, right? I could teach, I could be an editor. Um, first of all, the publishing world has, has been upended, you know, not surprisingly, you can still become a teacher, go right ahead, we're all in support of that. You can still become an editor, um, but I think people don't realize that the skills and competencies that you learn when you study words in a really sophisticated way lend themselves to almost any other way of thinking. Um, and we have a colleague who works with us who's, our, uh, who's one of our IT programmers, and he was an English major. Um, so I'm con I, I keep this list in my office of surprising people who are English majors because it's just one of the most wonderful things that you can discover about someone. That was, that was wonderful. I am so glad we're recording this, Robin. So thank you. So Ron, the next question is we get a ton of students who are interested in medical fields. And obviously we can't talk about every medical field, just like we can't talk about every transfer program because there's a million of them. So first things first, let's say you've got a student that comes to you and says, you know what? I want to study athletic training or I want to be a physical therapist. What do you tell them? You know, it's interesting that uh, one of the things you picked is athletic training because I'll share a personal story. My son uh, graduated from uh, college and actually works now as an athletic trainer. He was fortunate enough when he graduated high school to get a baseball scholarship. And the school he was going to, McKendree University in Southern Illinois, uh, he wasn't sure what he wanted to study. So I said, Brad, what are you interested in? He said, I like anatomy and physiology. Go figure, that's what his dad teaches. He said, I like athletics, I like mathematics. And so we started looking in the college catalog and he looked at uh, different programs like actuarial science. And he said, that's way too much math, dad. I don't wanna do that. He looked into potentially uh, other fields which required some chemistry. He said, I'm not, I don't know if I'm interested in chemistry. And then we found athletic training. and. He decided that, you know, that was something that he was going to give a go. And so one of the things that I will tell you is that what I'm holding in front of me here is uh, what we call guide sheets. And Jim, I'm sure we'll mention these later on, but at IVCC, depending on what you decide you want to study, let's pick athletic training, for example, you can begin your career for the first year or two at IVCC and some of the courses you would study, which are courses my son studied, would include introduction in nutrition, obviously very important for an athletic trainer to understand basics of nutrition. You're gonna take the general education courses, English, mathematics, and then you're gonna take some courses which are very specific to what you have chosen for um, athletic training. And, and you would take two semesters of anatomy and physiology. Uh, my son couldn't emphasize enough how much anatomy and physiology played a role in all of his studies in athletic training and continue to play a role in what he does. He's now a certified athletic trainer. He works in minor league baseball for the Kansas City Royals. He's in Columbia, South Carolina right now at their spring training facility. And the courses that you would take the first two years at the community college will be what I call the foundation courses, which will greatly prepare you as you then transfer to the university to start taking more specific courses tailored toward your major. Um, another course that he took, which I noticed is on here as well, was a personal and community health course. I remember him taking that. So those are a few examples of what he would take. As an anatomy and physiology instructor, 
I've had all kinds of students over the years who have gone into a variety of medical professions, nursing, physical therapy, speech pathology. I just wrote a letter of recommendation for a student going into speech pathology this past year and she emailed me back and said she was accepted. She's thrilled. Even some uh, uh, professional medical professionals in the area, Dr. Bob Morrow, who's a, uh, a physician with uh, St. Margaret's Hospital in Spring Valley, um, he is a former student of mine. So um, that's an example of what you can do with whatever profession you choose related to the medical field. You can get a really good start at IV. Awesome. Thank you, Ron. And I will say Ron teaches anatomy and physiology, which he stated at 7 a.m. And believe it or not, you could have knocked me over with a feather. We have students clamoring to get up at 5 or 6 a.m. just to take Ron's and that in phys course. So um, I, I will say one thing, though, Quentin, since the pandemic began, that course at that time is no longer offered. So Okay. But uh, we'll see in the future if it if it comes back, but it's not on the books right now. But I did it probably for 20 years and thoroughly enjoyed it. We, we had a student worker who literally would get up at 5 a.m. just to take Ron Grolo's class, which is um, saying an awful lot. Um, so, Robin, I'm going to turn it back over to you. And actually, Jim, if you're cool with it, when Robin's done, I want to hear about your experience with back to kind of what could I do with a psychology major? Because Maureen put a question in the chat. So Robin, first things first, what kind of psychology courses do we offer here? Well, let me first say that I believe psychology is the number one college major in the United States. And I think it has been for something like 35 or 40 years. Um, so we understand that students generally have incredible interest in psychology. And we see that that has been sustained for a number of years throughout several kinds of changes in the ways in which we understand the world. Um, so psychology is not <clears throat> ever going away. Um, and you'll find that our psychology courses are, are full. Um, we have about fo four full-time instructors um, who teach and we offer a lot of dual credit courses. Um, in psychology to give high school students a, a college experience already while they're in high school. Um, so we offer our general psychology, which I think is just called literally psychology 101, general psychology. Um, and then we offer about five or six other more detailed or um, elective psychology courses. And those range from more in-depth disciplines within psychology. So something that's called abnormal psychology, right? That's a, that's a popular class that students take. Uh, we also have a class on human sexuality. So again, something that's a really kind of a smaller subset of the general range of topics and information that you would cover in 16 weeks in a generalized psychology class. Um, we also offer um, we offer in, in kind of coincident, so at this kind of coincidentally with our education offerings, uh, students who are interested in uh, becoming elementary school teachers or preschool teachers, um, we offer a child growth and development course, which is also heavily psychology based. Um, and again, those are students, you know, those students who take that class are interested probably in the teaching and the helping professions. I think we might get to that a little bit later, um, but it is a psychology class. Um, and that that particular instructor has a background in, um, in, in teaching and in psychology in particular and in working with, um, you know, working with young people and working with within the mental health profession. Um, so, you know, we offer, and I don't know, Jim, you you can jump in if there's, there's any, any elective that I'm, that I'm not remembering um, at the moment. Oh, personality. Again, that's another class that's, you know, in, in, the, in the psychology landscape of 16 weeks, you touch on all these different themes, um, and then you can take a course that goes more in depth to one or two of the things that you've studied. And courses like abnormal psychology, human sexuality, and personality would be examples of something that you got a little taste of in the general class, but then with interest, you can go in and study a little bit more in depth. So Jim, what was what was your experience as a, as a psychology major? What would you, what would you tell students about that? Well, <clears throat> the thing that attracted me to psychology was I was intrigued by the the subject matter, 
Um, it, it promotes critical thinking, depth of thought, you know, introspection. You can look inside. You can, you can read psychological theories and apply them to yourself or to your friends or to others. And so, so I was attracted to the subject matter. And I do think that that's, um, I, I think that's one of the draws for the field of psychology. Robin stole my thunder. I was waiting to say psychology is the, it is the most popular undergraduate degree program <clears throat> major across the nation for many years now. It's a, it's, it's a very, um, it's a solid, yeah, that's okay. It's a solid, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Springboard to a graduate uh, degree. <clears throat> psychology is actually another discipline that's good for law. Again, you know, you want to have uh, a lot of times psychological angles are, are good in the, in the study and practice of law. Um, I also know that it's the most popular degree for speech pathologists. Now, Ron, there is, there is science embedded in a, in a pre-speech pathology degree, but you can easily fit the biology and the chemistry into a psychology degree program and still springboard into a graduate program in speech pathology. So I, I know that it's the number one um, springboarding uh, undergraduate degree to go into speech path. Um, so, I mean, really, I was attracted by the subject matter more than anything. I, the one thing that I've been sitting here, <clears throat> when we talk about all the different humanities, the arts, and the sciences, all the disciplines that we're talking about really do promote critical thinking. You, you know, and, and that's a skill that you take with you, and that's why it doesn't necessarily matter whether you know what you're studying now, it's, it's the end result of when you finish your education, you're gonna be well-rounded. You're going to have touched base with different things. And I think it's not a bad idea for those that are undecided majors to experiment with these classes, experiment a little bit in, in various disciplines. That's one way to help shape your idea of what you might wanna major in. It doesn't always work. You might take an introduction to psychology class and it might not really give you the best idea of what somebody really does as a psychologist or can do with a psychology degree, but at least you dabbled in it. And, and I do think that students, that, that's one of the approaches that I take when I, when, when I have a student that's really undecided. They thought they were gonna do one thing, they were disillusioned when they took a class or two, so they start experimenting with other coursework. And, and it's okay, it's okay to bounce around like that a little bit, especially at the two year level at, that IVCC offers because you're really required to take a variety, a breadth of education. That's what general education is. You have to take some humanities. Even if you're a math major, you have to take English. Even if you're a, a chemistry major, you have to take a humanities and social science and arts class. So experimentation across these different disciplines is, can be very, um, it, can, it can be very important to helping students, people find their way or navigate their way through higher education. That was, that was really good. And I'm actually a little upset, Jim, because you just stole my thunder because I was going to say the critical thinking aspect of it. I jokingly said at the start, why the heck would anybody hire a geologist to, to work in higher education and admissions and records? <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. Um, and it's exactly what Jim just said. They didn't care that, that I knew what rock was what and the difference between igneous and metamorphic and sedimentary. They know that I took a wide range of general education courses. I took a history, I took a psych, I took a social, I took chemistry. And as, as Jim said, they know that I learned critical thinking to earn my degree. And so you can teach processes all day long. You can't teach critical thinking so much on the job. So that's why you learn it here, getting your four-year degree. So with that, Ron, I'm going to, oh yeah, Jim, sorry, go ahead. Um, well, I kind of lost my train of thought because I thought I was going to, um, mm, I'll get back to it. Sorry. No worries. No worries. So Ron, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but we often hear a lot. Engineering is one of those majors where I think eight of the top 10 career or top 10 paying careers out there now for entry level are engineers. So we hear a lot of it from students. How can we help students who want to 
study engineering start out at IVCC. And once again, I would just emphasize that if you are coming to IVCC, please make an appointment to see a counselor. And what the counselors will do as soon as they find out that you are interested in engineering, they will sit down with you and guide sheet and they'll let you know what courses you can take at IVCC your first two years prior to transfer. And you will take some of the general education courses in the humanities and the fine arts and the social sciences. But then you will take a, a pretty heavy dose of mathematics and science related to engineering as well. So you're gonna take chemistry you're going to take the mathematics sequence, which is three semesters of calculus, followed by differential equations. You're going to take two years of physics, uh, ending with uh, TAM, theoretical and applied mechanics, as part of your degree. So um, it, it's a very, very good degree. Uh, you'll get a real solid foundation, and you will get those critical thinking skills. I'll be honest, sometimes a student or two will... Uh, tell me from engineering that they just want to know what they need to do and how to do it and then come up with the answer. Well, that's not the real world of engineering. And we've taken an approach where students are taught to critically think, to solve problems and to come up with, with solutions. So that's, uh, that, that's what you're going to face when you go into engineering, which is an excellent program. Many students do go that route. Yeah, Quentin, can I speak to that? You certainly so, can. So yeah, <clears throat> engineering does seem to be one of the more popular majors, for sure. You get a lot of people that are least interested in it. Um, it's, it's definitely um, aggressive with math and science, you know, so you have to have, you know, it's, you have to have some aptitude for it, um, but people grind through sometimes as well. But we've had great success. University of Illinois is a top five engineering program in, in across in the world. And we have great success in getting our students into that into the University of Illinois. And it is extremely competitive to get in there. But every year we have at least a few students that get into that program, at least a couple. Um, so I just want to say that. But what I what I meant to say a couple minutes ago when you asked me about psychology, I didn't I wasn't so concerned with a career. I wasn't so like, I wasn't focused at that time. I was just trying to, you know, stay afloat as, as a college student. And like I said, I found, I found a discipline that was intriguing to me and it attracted me and it kept me attached and it kept me going. And that's, that's one of the things. And the career kind of takes care of itself at some point in time. Everybody Yes, you can target something. You can be very targeted and say, I'm going to study, um, I'm going to study accounting and be an accountant. Okay, and then you become an accountant. But um, that that's the road less traveled. More people kind of have a variety of skills and they kind of fall into a career per se. Not not everyone, but but many do. So anyway, I that was really what I wanted to communicate is is the interest in the subject is what kept me motivated to continue on in school. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. All right. So Robin, we're going to go back to you and you alluded to this earlier. So the state of Illinois has a teacher shortage and we talk to a lot of students who are interested in becoming a teacher, whether it's elementary ed, whether it's secondary ed. Um, so I put history in there just to give it a little bit of specificity, but how can we help a student who wants to be a high school teacher? Well, the first thing is that you need to understand each state has their own rules and regulations regarding how to become uh, employed in any district. So pre preschool through 12th grade um, and you need a bachelor's degree. Uh, and by the way, there's also an incredible substitute teacher shortage for which you also you don't need licensure or certification to be a substitute teacher, you just need to have a clean background check and a bachelor's degree. So a lot of people do that while they're thinking about maybe their next career move. Um, and it's not a bad gig because it gets you, you know, exposed to what the teaching world is like. Um, but certainly we have an early childhood program um, where you can actually get your associate's degree in early childhood. Um, we don't have courses that support students who want to teach at the elementary or the high school level. Um, 
but we do have one intro to education class that does have observation hours um, where students can, again, certain certain programs, you know, criminal justice for obvious reasons, um, nursing and early childhood do require background checks of even the students because in your observation hours and in your teaching hours, you are coming in contact with real life students. So obviously you need to be of a certain level that the state has mandated in terms of being okay with a, a DMV check and that kind of a thing. Um, but you can start with our, several of our education courses um, that, and we have partnerships and agreements with almost all of the, the, publics, the public and the private surrounding us where our students transfer and then go on and get their bachelor's degree in education because in Illinois, you can actually get an undergraduate degree in education. Other states, you have to major in a discipline. Um, I know this from uh, another another life and another job. Um, but Illinois, you know, allows you to major in you know art education or or history education or early childhood education, um, that kind of a thing. So you do get you know your what we what we've been calling all night your gen eds out of the way at a school like IBCC, and then you go on and you specialize and you take courses that more specifically train you in um, in pedagogy which is what we the fancy term for for teaching um, but again we have we have a few courses that could work for you depending on where your interest is we're more heavy in early childhood um, and we have a lot of alums in the area who are graduates from our programs who are directors of centers and facilities or who are preschool teachers themselves um, and some of these credentials are what we call stackable so you can get you know your regular certificate and then you can study to be a director of the preschool and get a certificate that allows you to do that. And obviously that's more education, but it's also better paying. Um, you know, the more credentials you have, the greater your, your income over your lifetime or even short term um, will be. So we certainly love teaching teachers. I mean, we are teachers ourselves. So, you know, that's a perfect match. Somebody who comes in and says, I wanna teach, you know, I wanna, I wanna be on the other side of the desk. Um, we also have an honors program that might be a great place for those who are interested in taking leadership roles and people who want to teach are often people who are interested in taking leadership roles. So um, our honors program has had a long history of students who are interested in service professions and teaching in general. Uh, so there are a lot of ways that we can help meet those needs. And again, as you know, I'm going to echo what Ron said earlier, come and talk to a counselor because they're the ones who can definitely set you on the right course and put you in touch with people, uh, faculty, give you syllabi so you can see what you'd be studying. Thank you, Robin. So Ron, this is gonna be the last sort of major specific question before we turn it over to Jim for some, just how to keep all this together. So just about everybody has to take a math course. And I think you mentioned that earlier. So what kind of math courses do we offer? And I understand this is a really vague question. So um, take it whichever way you'd like. Well, I'll, I'll just say that, uh, you know, for the associate in arts degree, you may need to only take one math class, for example. Uh, but depending on what other degrees you may choose, you may take a lot more math than that. Uh, so at the most introductory level, we offer uh, Math 1000, which is math for the liberal arts, or general elementary statistics, Math 1008. Uh, other math courses include courses that are um, specific to certain disciplines. Business statistics would be an example. We offer... Um, finite mathematics, college algebra, trigonometry. We offer the calculus sequence, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3. We offer differential equations. Uh, most people don't get into the Calc sequence and, or Diff EQ unless they're doing a major like engineering, pre-med, pre-dent, things like that. Once again, your counselor will work with you to um, let you know what math you would need to take uh, depending on what your major is. And the other thing I just want to emphasize two things is that the counselor may ask if you know where you're planning on transferring to. We don't know the specific school, but you give the counselor some idea as to a couple of different schools. Each university can have a little bit of a different requirement for what you'll need to do. The other thing that I want to mention is tutoring. Uh, that obviously comes into play with math, but it comes into play with a whole variety of subjects. IBCC has free tutoring. And if you need extra help with your classes, 
you not only will, will be able to see your instructors during their office hours, but we have students who work as tutors who've taken these classes who are highly thought of and highly regarded in the help that they provide you with whatever class you may need help with. Awesome, thanks, Ron. So we're gonna turn it over to Jim and we actually have some really good questions that just got typed in that I think kind of speak to what, what I was thinking about when typing this question up. So Jim, do you wanna just maybe mention for Chloe, how many math courses? I know you already answered it in the yeah. chat, but. Yeah, so. <clears throat> And it's really relevant to, to the, the um, slide that you have up here too. My answer to you, Chloe, is it's two or three. It really depends on your transfer institution. So every school you're transferred to is going to be a little bit different with respect to their exact requirements. But um, usually a psych major is going to have a, at least a college algebra and statistics. And uh, some of the schools will also require one slightly higher level math, such as fi uh, finite or business calculus, depending on where you go. So two or three is kind of the best answer I could give to you. Um, but no, the, the best answer is it depends on the institution that you're transferring to. And that's what's relevant or related to how do you, how do you keep everything straight? How do you decide what to ma major to choose? I think that's where we come into play in the counseling center we've done so much of the legwork for students with respect to having all the various requirements per school listed. And, and I saw Ron, you had a guide sheet up earlier. I don't know which one it was, maybe athletic training or whatever. I've, I've got, got the whole book. Yeah, no, so, <laughs> so I have my book too. So yeah. we have all this, all these details, um, um, kind of mapped out for our students and for the state of Illinois schools, especially. Um, but we also have a lot of experience in working with private institutions and schools from other states. So, um, so how do you keep it all straight? I think the best thing to do is work with a counselor. We try to teach process. We don't just try to tell you here, take this, 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 and this. We try to show you why you're taking those classes, how it fits into the broader spectrum of earning your associate's degree in order to transfer on seamlessly. We try to do that to you. And hopefully by the time you're um, ending your stint with IVCC, you've got a lot of independence and autonomy and you kind of know how to work systems because higher education, every institution that you're going to is a system and you do have to find out how that works, how each school works. So, um, and again, we, we will help you all along the way. At some point in time, you're gonna leave us. So hopefully we're helping you develop skills to take with you so that you can navigate at the university as well. Um, as far as major, yeah, okay. As far as what major do you choose? Oh, sorry, Jim. No, that's okay. You can, you can stay on that. You can go forward. As far as deciding on a major, <clears throat> it's very difficult. That's an independent journey. It's a journey that I will share with you. I will talk to you. I will help you with resources. Um, again, you can experiment with different courses, but nobody can tell you what you're going to major in. You're going to eventually have to find, figure that out on your own. But again, um, in the counseling center, I've been here for 24 years and I'm not even the most senior counselor on our staff. And I say that because we have a lot of experience, lots and lots, many years of experience working with students across any given major and virtually any school that you could think of. We've probably worked with uh, students in transfer. So, so we can help, but ultimately you have to kind of figure it out on your own as to, as to what you want to major in. Should you see a, a counselor every semester? I think it's good because all these little details, the nuances of, of the word I'm using is navigating, you know, navigating higher education. We're experts at that. We can help you with that. We can make sure that you're tracking uh, towards your associate's degree properly. Even if you don't know what you're majoring in, you still have requirements at the associate degree level to meet and we'll help you track those uh, until hopefully you do focus in a little bit more on, on a particular degree or major. So it is a good idea, in my opinion, to see one of us each semester. Um, and it's good job security for me. So please make, <laughs> appointments. make many appointments with Jim. <laughs> 
So, so Jim, I'm actually going to take a couple questions from the chat from Elena. So first things first, um, she asked if I can find it now, are art major credits. So if a student took art classes here, are they able to transfer out of IVCC? And then sort of a follow up, what kind of gen eds would she take if she did declare an art major? Okay. So yes, um, art courses, art courses transfer. Um, some schools, so basically we have drawing and design. We have a drawing sequence and a design sequence. And we have two art history classes. Those are the foundations for every art major that you would be transferring to. You're going to take both drawing classes, both uh, design classes, and um, two different art history classes. Um, most universities accept those carte blanche. They just accept the credits and you move forward. Some universities will look ask you to submit a portfolio of your artwork the the design and drawing stuff and they'll evaluate your portfolio even though they're accepting the credits they might evaluate the portfolio and say you know we like what you've done but we really want you to start here in our program so sometimes you don't just progress seamlessly on to the next level of art courses at the university it depends but most most schools are pretty good about about accepting all of our credits Okay, and we have to believe that we've had strong enough art program over the years that um, even the activity courses such as drawing design have been transferring nicely even through the portfolio. So other general education courses you take as an art major, you would need one college level math, you would need two college level sciences, you would need three social sciences, English one, English two, and speech. A health, a health requirement, and, um, and one humanities course in addition, well, one or two humanities courses in addition to your two art history classes. So that's kind of how it would round out. Now you have a lot of choices in which sciences you take, which social sciences you take. Nobody's gonna dictate to you too, mu too much in those areas. And I can see the other, uh, how many math courses are needed for an English lit major, one college level math typically. And, um, and that can be math for liberal arts. Math for liberal arts is a math course that's really designed for somebody that's not going to focus in on math or, or need to have higher level math skills. It's, it's, it's perfect for art, English, music, uh, history. Well, not necessarily history, but other humanities uh, types majors. So one, yeah, yay. I get that a lot. And when I say, oh, you only need one more, you only need one college level math. I'm like the most popular person I, that, that uh, in the world sometimes when I tell a student that they only have to take one math course. So, so Jim, before I get to the last question, I just want to make a comment that speaks to what you've been talking about. And so one of, one of my proudest moments of working at IVCC doesn't concern me in the slightest. It's actually you, Jim, and I want to highlight this. And it was one of the first events. I've worked at a couple of four-year universities prior to this, and this is not to suggest anything negative about the four-year universities. But what I can tell you is I was presenting at an event. Jim was there. And, and this speaks to why you should see a counselor every semester, why you should talk to a counselor, is a student said, well, I want to focus on engineering and I want to go to U of I. And Jim said to a room full of people, oh, God, well, I don't know exactly what you said, but basically you said, you're only going to want to look at staying here at IVCC for a year. And that blew my doors off because from the institutions I came from and from other institutions that we sometimes hear about, they don't care so much about your journey. They care about, are you gonna be here for four years? And again, I, it, that's, that's not a blanket statement of negativity for anybody, but for Jim to explicitly say in front of a room full of people what he said, the, the answer clearly was, we're gonna do what's best for the student. We need to sit down and talk with you. And the reason Jim said that is it was in the best interest of the student to take one year of coursework here at IVCC and then transfer on for their sake not to keep students here at IVCC for two years. But as he said, there are so many ins and outs of, of transferring. And, and I'm gonna bleed into the next question. And then it looks like Maureen has a question I'll have you answer. Um, 
but there are so many different things that pop up and because our counselors truly are interested in the best interest of the student that's why they should meet with them so with that jim we've got students that transfer to 29 states for for four-year universities and this is a way vague question i get that but how do you help students to start thinking about it? i know there's a lot of legwork they have to do but what would you as a counselor talk to tell somebody who said you know what i want to end up at northern arizona like you did what do i have to do okay well the first thing I try to get students to understand when they're when they're considering going out of state is our degree doesn't transfer as a package to out of state schools. Out of state schools look at courses individually. However, our courses transfer extremely well. They fit into out of state packages, out of state programs very, very well. So like English one is English one is English one almost anywhere you're going to go. General calculus is going to be a general calculus course almost anywhere you go. So our coursework transfers very well and often it's just as seamless as if you would be transferring to an in-state university. Just because the out-of-state universities don't accept the degree as a package, they accept all the credits that you earn along the way built into your degree. Um, it's ironic, literally today, I, I've been working with a student that wanted to go to University of Illinois in their, or University of Arizona, I'm sorry, University of Arizona in their College of Business. And I have a big passion for the state of Arizona in general, okay? So I've been working with him. I, I, I was a little, I was a little, I didn't want to tell him, but I was kind of like, you got, well, I did tell him. I was like, you got to pick up the pace here with your GPA. I was a little worried that it wasn't going to work out just right. Sure enough, he visited over spring break. He went out to Arizona with his family and visited the University of Arizona, sent me an email yesterday about how awesome it was and how much he loved the visit. And even if he doesn't get in now, he's going to move out there and hopefully he can get in there later. And then this morning he said he got he got his acceptance, his admission letter. So so that was one example very, very pertinent today, literally this morning. I got, uh, I got that message from the student and he was a business major. And again, that pre-business curriculum that he did here, a couple of accounting classes, the math courses, micro and macroeconomics, they all transferred seamlessly for him. So he is really going to transfer seamlessly to an out-of-state school. I wanted to look at um, uh, Maureen's, Maureen's question about four-year school, my high school grades. Um, yeah, and, and Quentin, Quentin already answered that. You do have new life. Once, once you earn credits at IVCC, you become admissible to a university as a transfer student, not as an incoming freshman from high school. So they basically, um, your high school record doesn't necessarily matter much af after a certain point. It's usually one semester. Um, one semester at IVCC and they're only looking to see what your performance was at college. There are many, many people, I guarantee you, I promise you, many people may be disillusioned with high school, really smart, intelligent people, but just not particularly motivated in high school, didn't have the greatest track record in high school, but they have the aptitude to be, get a college degree, come to IVCC and do well, and they, and they transfer on seamlessly to the whatever university they want to go to. And I promise you that's the case. I've worked it many, many, many times in my career. So yes, you do have a, a, a new life, uh, you know, once you, get to the, once you get to IVCC. You're going to be looked at as a transfer student. So how you do at IVCC is going to matter and take precedence over how you did in high school. Um, would Northwestern take IVCC credits? Northwestern is an extremely difficult school to transfer to. I'm going to be straight with you. In my life, I worked with one student that I know of that transferred to Northwestern. And that student, though she transferred from IVCC to Northwestern, the credits weren't really great. They, they didn't, they, she got credits but she still had to, she was like treading water here. She still had to take uh, additional credit. It took her longer than just the standard four years to graduate once she got to Northwestern. But she did transfer from Northwestern or to Northwestern from IVCC. But that's a difficult school to transfer to. And it's just the nature of the institution. Um, they're not prone to 
they get their pick of their of the kids coming out of high school. So they just have fewer slots for transfer students more than anything. <clears throat> that, that is great. So I got to say, we're going to close up shop really quick. I am delighted at all the questions that you all have been asking. I'm actually considering maybe paying you to attend other presentations because this is the first academic showcase that went over time simply because students are asking questions. And that's the whole reason we do these events. So we're delighted. So real quick before I do my little spiel, I want to turn it back over to Rob and Ron and Jim. Any sort of closing statements you want to share? Robin, I'll start with you. I guess the, the other thing I would say in closing is a little bit of an emotional appeal. And so I, I can't imagine what it's like to be a young person in high school right now and to be assaulted by the different media images and stories that are coming out that are unraveling truths that we always held dear, you know, under, like I talked a little bit earlier about, about democracy and about our, our civic role in the world. And you're literally watching things happen on, on the television screen, on, on your phone screen. Um, and I guess I just want to say that we have people and courses of study at IVCC who can help you manage that, who can take those, inch, that, those, those questions that you have and that interest maybe you have in social justice or racial inequality um, or understanding how governmental structures work and the history of, of, of governmental structures and who has power and who doesn't and why. And we have people who can, who can tailor a course of study with you um, in very careful and academic ways. And taking those courses puts you in touch with a cohort of similar and like-minded students who are also questioning, who are also maybe um, unhappy with the narratives that they're seeing on display in front of them. And so what we do in higher education is make sense of all of that, right? We make sense of what's happening in the world in very concrete ways. We ask you to write papers. We ask you to, to assimilate in information and take tests to show that um, you know, you've thought through particular problems. And the problems are ripped from the headlines, right? They're ripped from what, what we're living and, and how we're living. And so, you know, if you want to be part of kind of like a social movement that thinks through issues of identity, if, you, if you're touched by anything that has been happening over the past several years in the world and you, you want to find a place come to IVCC and get in touch with me, get in touch with Ron, get in touch with Quentin or, or Jim, and we can help guide you to manifest what you're feeling and those energies into productive courses of study um, that will forever change you. Awesome, thank you, Robin. Ron, how about yourself? Uh, over my 35 year career, I've taught students who have come right from high school I've taught students in their 20s who have been out into the world of work as an example for a, a period of time and decided, you know, I'm gonna go back to college now. I feel like I'm ready. I've taught students who've come back uh, in their 40s and even in their 50s and maybe even a few older than that. Uh, regardless of the position that you're in, this is something that you can do. You can be successful. Take advantage of all that we are offering you Get help when you need it. Don't hesitate to ask questions. If there's anything I can do to help you, just let me know. We would be happy to have you uh, at Illinois Valley Community College. Awesome. Thank you, Ron. Jim, how about yourself? I don't know what else I can say. I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to working with you. Come on out. We've got a lot of experience, even if this is a temporary place for you. Um, one semester, one year, two full years, we can help you. We've got a lot of great things to offer. Um, I, I was someone who did not come to IVCC, right? I went straight away to a big school and it was, it, I kind of crashed and burned, it didn't work for me. All of my children went to IVCC and it was by far the best thing. It was the best thing I did. I, it was the best parenting move I ever did by encouraging them to go to IVCC. It really, really worked well for all of them. And I think it, give, it buys you a little more time to figure things out, buys you a little more time to get some both, both social and academic maturity. 
And uh, we do really care here. We've got great teachers. Nobody's talked about that. There are teachers here. People teach. They care about teaching and they're very good in the classroom. And that's an important thing about IV, that IVCC offers too. So come on out. We're looking forward to working with you. That was great. So, okay, I'm going to end it with, we already had sort of the other questions and I just screwed this up. My goodness, let's go back. And we're getting there. I'm just dragging it out. I don't want to leave you fine, fine students with your questions. Um, upcoming events, we're, we're past time, but explore IBCC, hear from students, being asked questions by students. We've turned it over to students for that. That's March 30th. Um, summer registration begins on April 2nd. Parent College 101, if there's any parents on or, or you want to tell your folks, that is April 6th. That's just going to be a general exploration, college exploration thing, not IVCC specific. Um, if you haven't applied and you're thinking about coming to IVCC, do so. And then I just want to end with two things. Ron mentioned it earlier tonight. Robin mentioned it. Jim mentioned it. If we didn't talk about something you're interested in tonight or you have further questions, um, just text or call this number. This is the main admissions line. You can text us and we'll get back to you. You can call us whatever, we will get you in touch with the folks who, who you need to be in touch with. That's what we're here for. We're the main resource. Um, finally, I just want to say I am super appreciative of, of everybody for logging on tonight and sticking with us. This has been such a delight for me to listen to Ron and Robin and Jim talk about this. Um, I can vouch for, for what everybody said. I took a music appreciation course when I was here at IVCC. I am not a music major. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. Truly, there was a lecture that changed my life and stuck with me to this day. And so, Chloe, I am so thrilled that you're thinking about English literature because I hold literature near and dear to my heart. And um, th that's what college is for, is to find those things that drive you, whether you do them for a career or not. Again, I'm, I'm delighted that you all stayed on. I'm delighted that you asked great questions. We'll have a recording of this that we are going to send out to everybody who RSVP'd that'll process by tomorrow morning. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Jim. This has been a pleasure. And thank you for giving up your evening to help students. Have a good evening, everyone. All right. Now I just need to figure out how to end this. <laughs> All right, here we go.